Welcome to the Obo Construct Earthing Systems tutorial. We'll begin straight away and are logged in on the homepage of our Obo Construct portal. Here you can see whether you have already created a project or not. If you were in the position of having created projects, then they would appear here and you would have the option of directly entering the modules of Earthing Systems as well as Underfloor, Fire Protection or Cable Assignment Systems, which we've talked about in previous tutorials. We'll now add a new project which will appear with the name New Project. In our example, we'll change the name, let's say, to Train Station. By clicking onto the tick, we save the name and the building has already been added. Via the plus symbol, we can add a building at any time and also change the name with one click. This here we call Entrance Hall and we'll save the name by using the tick. Now we'll begin with the design of the earthing system. The building data gives a rough overview of the type of building and of the length, width and depth of the floor plate. We'll determine the length at 20 meters and the width at 20 meters. When putting in the depth of the floor plate and there's also a cellar, the cellar has to be included in the depth. If you enter 2.5 meters and also enter a cellar, you will always be on the safe side. You can always find detailed information about this in the dimension drawings of the building. The standard DIN 18014 requires a foundation earth electrode. The foundation earth electrode that we will select now is called Type B. In the next step, you'll be asked if there's an increased earth resistance, for example due to a white trough, black trough or due to perimeter insulation. If this is the case, you need to confirm here with a yes. You will have the appropriate information available, such as which concrete you've used or if further insulation layers will be added to the foundation. In the next step, you'll be asked if the foundation is to be built with commonly used concrete such as, for example, steel reinforcements or mats. If this is the case, then you need to confirm again with a yes. Now we're at the first selection point, i.e. the ring earth electrode. We have to select this item as we have an increased earth resistance. And as you can see, step 3 can be found in the sketch and is marked as point 3. You can see the ring earth electrode here as it appears externally. Below we can see an overview of our selection so far. We've chosen a foundation earth electrode type B, we have an increased earth resistance, we have a mesh with a standard width of 20 meters and we already have 80 meters of the ring earth electrode that we need to lay. Here we select a round conductor. In step 4, a description of the selected product is displayed including its measurements, the dimensions of the material and of the construction form. Next we come to the selection of the connector for the ring earth electrode. At this point we jump to step 5, as you can see step 5 is displayed here. Also at the top, this bar shows you the stage at which you are at the moment. In our case, we're at step 5 of a possible 28, which equates to approximately 17%. By choosing the cross connector in A4, we come to the next step. The foundation earth electrode is covered with 5 cm of concrete, which means we can select normal hot dip galvanized products here. So we'll take the round earth conductor again. As you can see, step 7 is again displayed in our sketch. We're now in the floor plate in the concrete itself. It's possible to use filters here directly by, for example, saying that we want to use steel in a round form. At this point, the only ring earth electrode possible appears. But we also have the option to see our complete selection. This is a useful way to check things if you're uncertain about any aspect. You could also select copper, but we'll stick with the round conductor in a material thickness of 10 millimeters. Here at the top in the bar, you can see again that we've finalized 28% of the configuration, we're getting closer to our goal. Selecting the connector for the foundation earth electrode is as easy as it was choosing the connector for the ring earth electrode. For the reinforcement clamps that we need in order to connect the earth foundation electrode to the reinforcement, we select the diagonal clamps. The connection cable from the ring earth electrode or the foundation earth electrode to the equipotential bonding is selected in step 13 and this is shown in our sketch accordingly. This step can be completed using the round conductor of which we will only require 20 meters. The quality again is of A4. If protective caps are required in order to signal that material is exiting from the ground, in order to comply with administrative regulations, you can select those in step 17. The selection of connection lugs and cables can be done via the selection in the side menu. 
Again, let's take a quick look at this. The material is stainless steel, the form is round. And you can choose here from our three rings in the dimensions of 20 meters, 50 meters or 50 kilograms. If the exit point is to be sealed with a sealing collar, you can select that option in step 20. In step 21, we choose the method of connecting the connection cable to the foundation earth electrode and in step 23, to the ring earth electrode. In step 25, you will be asked to select the corrosion protection tape. You will have the option of either a width of up to 100mm width or up to 50mm. To complete the selection phase, it should be determined whether a fixed earthing terminal is required or not. We will now complete the configuration process by checking a summary of all the products you've selected. Now it's also possible to export the order list as an Excel document or to send the list directly to the wholesale trader. However, there's also the option to save everything. After saving, two more points appear. That is the tender text as well as a project description. You will be able to access this project again at any time via the menu item Projects. Once you have opened it, you can edit, add to your selection or also delete items. We will then again arrive at the summary of our project which we have already looked at. And if we click on to Obo Construct, we'll get back to the general homepage. I hope you enjoyed the configuration stage in Obo Construct and I wish you every success in executing your project.